Hey, what is up guys? Avenged here, and welcome back to my Bloodborne Let's Play. So, in the last episode, I tried to explain why it was best to come across the road from the bridge and not go fight the werewolves. It's because, as you see, I am wearing normal civilian clothes. This way... Let's see... There's a... Oh! Okay. This is the first place that you can get armor before having to fight anything. Oh, he fell. Okay. So we got him. These guys are can be somewhat difficult to deal with, especially this guy. He goes kind of apeshit with his weapon here. Come on. Oh god. What are you doing apeshit? Yeah. <laughs> ah. Can't remember his timings. Ah, uh, you can tell I'm rusty. Okay. Now, if I can remember, is there anything over here? No. Okay. So there are items on these rafters, as you can see. I believe there's only one. Is he just chilling down there still? Alright. So before you hop down, you're going to want to be careful though, because there is an enemy to my right. There's also a rat right there. So... And there's another one of those guys. Yep, that's so, uh, as you can see, parrying is a very effective way to kill enemies if you know how to do it properly. Uh, there you go, Hunter Garb. This will increase your defense quite a bit to where you don't take nearly as much damage as you would if you were wearing these normal clothes, so... As you can see, it looks far cooler than just wearing whatever I was wearing. So now let's go kill these enemies because blood echoes are needed to level up and I wouldn't mind having a bit more. I wonder where that guy is that fell down. I can't imagine he died. Oh, there he is. Come on. Come on. Now, there's quite a bit of stuff that you can get in this first area that will help you out early game. Oh, nope. There you go. Kind of wasting a lot of bullets just trying to parry, but I gotta get used to this game again. Now, there, I don't think there's any items over here, so there really is no need to kill all these rats except from getting, or except from getting blood echoes. But having as much blood echoes early on as you can, early game, is a good idea. So, use this board to jump down here. Jump down on this board here, and then drop down. Take a little damage. Now these things look like they're dead, but they are absolutely not dead. That item is basically just a lure to get them all to come and attack you, so... Take them out. They have quite a bit of health, they'll usually run out of stamina just to kill one of them.
Oh. Grab this. So, at the very end of this tunnel, there's a bit of a hard enemy to take out. There's a way to get behind it, so I'll show you exactly later. But I prefer to kill these guys. I try to get everything done in one run so enemies don't respawn while I'm out here. So, when I return to this area, I won't have to deal with anywhere near as much and like, no enemies, to be honest. So... Something I didn't get to show you last episode is that each weapon you have while playing Bloodborne, if you press, I believe, L2. Nope, not L2. What is it? I can't remember. Is it L1? L1, there we go. Each weapon is called the Trick Weapon. There are two different modes to each weapon. This one gives me more reach. But a bit slower attack speed. But as you see, like when I'm in my my regular state, I do side slashes basically, and this one is mainly vertical slashes, so if I have to fight in a condensed hallway or hit someone through a door, I can use this mode, and now I should be able to attack my enemies. But I prefer this one because it's faster, and it's, it's, it just seems more reliable in this mode. So if you look over here, that is a giant pig. <laughs> kind of a bitch to fight early on in the game. But, I believe... I can make a shortcut here. Now, we're not going to be going across this bridge just yet. We are going to actually activate this shortcut. So the way Bloodborne works in a lot of other Dark Souls games is that your bonfires, which are your resting places and places that you respawn, um, usually should be few and far between, but usually there's always a path to a previous bonfire just by activating some uh, shortcut. Very simple enemies to deal with these guys. You're gonna want to get them one at a time though if you can. Oh, goodness. Okay, there we go. So, just by going over here, there should be an enemy around here, I believe. Right there. Oh. And there you go. We're right back to the very first bonfire that we lit. Bonfire. What am I trying to say? It's lamppost. <laughs> Across the valley to the deep. I already said all that stuff. If you keep coming back to talk to him, he'll end up giving you an item later. This guy actually has his own uh, somewhat storyline that you could do. It's just... Come on, let me lock on. What are you doing? Now that item is a lure for this guy in the chair. He's got a huge gun that he's going to fucking surface person that he's going to uh, try and get you with. When the hunt began, the healing church left us, blocking the great bridge to the cathedral ward as old Yannam burned to the ground at moonlit night. Open this up. Right. There is... Guy hiding behind that. 
and another guy hiding over here. See, what these games like to do is they like to just hide enemies everywhere so they chip off a little bit of your health. It's a difficult game, but usually like if you play the game enough you'll uh you'll know where everything is and you won't make the mistakes that newcomers do. Like I made a lot of. Okay, what else was I gonna do? I'm trying to get everything done here. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Okay. So I gotta run all the way back. Or no, actually, I'll, I'll take the other way. I'll go with the reverse option for what I was gonna do. But first, I will open this door, just for a quick, easy path around those big guys, so I don't have to walk around. All right. So in this next section, if I'm correct. There will be dogs in cages. Now, as you walk by them, they're gonna bust out and they're gonna start attacking you. So, best thing to do is just kill them while they're in the cages. That way, you don't have to deal with any. Uh, he's gonna bust out. dog over here, you see an item, and he's gonna come around the corner. There he is. I'm planning on using these cold blood dews somewhat soon. And this is one of the people you're gonna want to pay attention to. Okay, so if you see, if you're wondering why there's these red lanterns outside of all these uh, places, it's because there's incense in there and it's supposed to ward off the beasts. So when the hunt begins, uh, people who are willing to partake in the hunt, like uh, the people you see out here, which who are turning into beasts themselves, ironically, um, they go out, as well as the hunters, they go out and fight the beast while the regular folk inside stay inside and put incense outside the doors to ward the beasts away from them so they can stay safe. So while we're up here, bust these barrels, drop down to here. There's a couple items up here and some items that you can slash down. So might as well get that while we're up here. Oh, I don't like. Oh. Sorry, it's just a bit uh Oh crap! Yep, there we go. I gotta go back up. Not sure where I am though. Where all my enemies are. Okay, let's see. There we go. I believe there's another one. Yep, over there. I believe these respawn if you were to die, so you want to try and get them in one life as you're doing all this. And I don't think there are any more items up here, if I recall. Okay. So I know some people have made this mistake just because you saw them and everything's been hostile towards you since you've been here. But, 
you come out here. There is another hunter standing there. Do not attack her. She has an interesting quest line and can be pretty rewarding with something you get later on in the game. Oh. A hunter, are you? And an outsider. What a mess you've been caught up in. And tonight of all nights. Here. To welcome the new hunter. Now both hunters mark, if I recall, I believe it just uh, teleports you back to the last lamppost you used or teleports you back to the hunter's dream without losing your echoes. So if you run out of healing items, you don't feel like going on, but you don't want to run back, just use a bold hunter's mark and it should be able to take you back to the hunter's dream. Prepare yourself for the worst. There are no humans left. They're all flesh-hungry beasts now. Still lingering about. What's wrong? A hunter unnerved by a few beasts. <laughs> no matter. Without fear in our hearts, we're little different from the beasts themselves. And she gives you a gesture. What are you still doing here? Enough trembling in your boots. A hunter must hunt. And that's all you can get from her right now until a little bit later. So we'll continue. So you're going to want to jump down here. Maybe you'll take a little bit of damage. Also, if you were to sneak up behind an enemy without them noticing and you do a charged R2 attack, it staggers them. And thus, that enemy was no trouble at all. Whoa! I did not know you were there. Kinda wanna get rid of all the enemies out here before I decide to, uh... jump down. Is there another enemy? Oh, right, here it is. Now, a lot of other enemies aren't as easy to parry as these guys. They get a bit harder down the road. Some bosses can even be parried, but that's yeah, that, can, that can get to be a little bit difficult. So, uh, so when you saw that ladder, and I was down in the trenches, uh, this is the re this is where it would lead to. This is another way that you can get around. There are two gunmen and this guy with the pole staff, or whatever you want to call it. It can be a bit. I'm in a nuisance while fighting them. Oh, that was dumb of me. Oh god, no. Okay. Well, at least I didn't die. First things first. If you want to go level up, you're going to need this before fighting any bosses. So the only way to get insight is by fighting bosses seeing certain things or by consuming a madman's knowledge if you don't if you want to level up before fighting a boss in this game you'll need a madman's knowledge and the first guaranteed one that you can find is over here so i'm planning on consuming that pretty soon so if you look over here that is the way back up there's another thing on the rafters there. This is the way back to the sewer, and there's something down there. Huh. Can't believe I'd missed that. And if you're wondering, uh, if you already have 20 vials and 20 quicksilver bullets, they'll automatically be transferred to over to your storage. So when you die or uh, go to Hunter's Dream and come back, you'll be topped off to 20 or whatever, or until you use all of the blood vials and quicksilver bullets that are already in your storage. So you come up here, gotta get rid of these gun dudes. Go over here. 
I think there's two items in Raptor. I don't know. It's kind of hard to remember all this stuff. It's been a, close to a year since I played Bloodborne. Let's see. I know there's one there. There's a bunch of crows. There's gonna be one hiding in a barrel over there. Right over here. If you actually look, I think you can see. Yeah. There's a ladder down there. There's more crows over here. This ladder over here, I believe, leads to another shortcut, or just to somewhere you can, uh... You're gonna want, kinda wanna go over here before you go across that bridge at the other end of the uh, sewerway that I showed you. And I believe after we bring up the shortcut, that'll be it for this episode. Okay, so there's another madman's knowledge. So there's this the big dude. Oh, I alerted him by accident. Jeez. These ones can be a bit tough, the ones with the trees as weapons. They're just as easy to parry as the rest, so keep that in mind. He's dead. What the heck was that? Okay. This is where I fought those dogs, which are still dead because I haven't gone anywhere. And we'll talk to her. See, are you? I don't know your voice, but I know that smell. Are you a hunter? Can you just go look for my mom? She never came back from the hunt, and she went to find him, but now she's gone too. I'm all alone. I'm scared. Thank you. My mum wears a red jeweled brooch. It's so big and, and beautiful. You won't miss it. Oh, I mustn't forget. If you find my mum, give her this music box. It plays one of Daddy's favourite songs. And when Daddy forgets us, we play it for him so he remembers. Mum's so silly when I'm off without it. My mum wears a robe so big and beautiful. You won't miss it. Oh, and if you find me, I know. All right. So before we go, I'm going to put the music box here, and that is it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.